This is the ultimate Fortnite Chapter 6 Season 3 Optimization Guide. I've made countless highly rated optimization guides and after following this video you will get higher FPS, lower input delay, and a faster feeling system overall. So let's start by opening Fortnite and going to settings, because if your Fortnite settings aren't fully optimized, you're already leaving performance on the table, and no Windows tweak is going to make up for the FPS you've already lost. The first setting you'll see at the top is window mode. Put simply, exclusive full screen usually gives you the lowest input delay. While windowed full screen tends to give higher and more consistent FPS, allows you to tab out of your game quicker and lets you seamlessly drag your mouse across multiple monitors. Not even pro players can agree on a single option here, so it's definitely personal preference. Just pick the one you like more. Next is resolution. Set your resolution to your monitor screen size no matter what. Do not decrease the resolution to get more FPS. We can fix that issue with the 3D resolution setting in a second. Next is VSync. Turn it off because it adds a ton of unnecessary input delay. For the frame rate limit, despite the fact that you will get better 1% lows with uncapped FPS, it also adds a lot of delay. When your FPS is higher than your monitor's refresh rate, your GPU has extra frames lined up to render before it can get to the newest one. That means that most of the frames shown on your monitor will be slightly delayed, and this delay can be up to 10 milliseconds. Next is the rendering mode. Should you use performance mode or DirectX 12? Before you make a decision, let's talk about the massive difference in render times. DX12 lowest settings will give you up to 100% more render latency at the lowest settings with the same frame rate. On top of that, if you want far view distance on DX12, you're forced to turn on high meshes, and if you want low meshes, you have to deal with low view distance. So unless your stutters are really that bad in performance mode, it's 100% the better option. The following 5 graphic settings will not affect your performance under any circumstance, so feel free to customize them as much as you'd like. In graphics quality, depending on how good or bad your GPU is, decreasing the 3D resolution can boost your FPS. But be mindful of how low you drop the 3D res because at a certain point it has absolutely no effect on your frames apart from making things impossible to see. Every other setting below should be set to low except for view distance where the lowest I would go is medium. And if you have a decent PC there is no reason for you to not use Epic since it lets you see items from further away. After that is meshes. Stick with low meshes for less screen clutter and better performance. And then for report performance stats, the only thing it does is send your stats to Epic Games at the cost of your performance. So if you would rather have more FPS, leave it off. The final setting we're going to touch on is Nvidia Reflex. Thank you Epic Games for finally adding the setting to performance mode. If you're on an AMD or Intel graphics card though, skip this part of the video as this does not affect you. Without Reflex, normally the CPU queues frames for the GPU to render so that there's always one or two frames ready to output to your monitor, which is great for getting more FPS in single player games. But it's not ideal for esports titles like Fortnite as those frames in the render queue will be a bit delayed. With Nvidia Reflex on, it makes that render queue as small as possible so that you always get the latest image. It might might cost you some FPS and might cause stutters, so definitely try it on and then off to see if it works well for you. But what does Reflex On Plus Boost do in Fortnite? Well, since it's a CPU bound game where your GPU is usually underutilized, your GPU will often downclock itself, which isn't ideal for getting the best latency. By enabling Reflex Boost, it prevents itself from downclocking to further reduce input delay. But just like having Reflex on, be sure to test on plus boost for yourself as it can cause performance issues. And the last thing we're gonna do before getting to the Windows optimizations is going to the game tab at the top of the settings. Then scroll all the way down until you find the replay section. Feel free to disable replays for additional performance. However, FPS means nothing Nothing if your ping sucks. I used to get 40 ping on NA Central, but when I turned on exit lag, it dropped to 8. Even on e-servers where I already have good ping, exit lag rerouted me through optimized paths and brought it all the way down to 1. With results like this, it's no surprise that even Peterbot uses exit lag without being sponsored by them. It works by creating multiple optimized routes to the game server in real time, then automatically switching to the fastest one. It's like the internet's version of a toll highway, bypassing your ISP's inefficient routing so you get better ping. So if you want lower ping like me, you can try exit lag completely free. And the best part is that it doesn't need your credit card information. Just head to the link in the description, create an account, and your free trial starts automatically. Once it's installed, choose from over 2,000 supported games and see what it does for your connection. If you like the free trial, take advantage of their limited time deal. 
12 months of exit lag for the price of six. Try exit lag for free with the link below. It might just become your new favorite app. Now for the essential Windows optimizations that actually boost your FPS. Begin by creating a restore point. It's a smart first step before making system tweaks as it allows you to easily roll back changes if something goes wrong. To create a restore point, press your Windows key, type in create and press enter. Once this window shows up, click on configure, turn on system protection, then allocate as much space as you would like for future restore points, since you might want to create multiple as you follow this guide. When you're happy with that, click on apply and then OK. Next, click on create and name it something as boring and generic as possible so you can easily forget why you made the restore point. This can take up to 5 whole seconds, but when it's done, click on OK to close the window. After your restore point is created, press your Windows key, type in game mode, press enter, and turn on game mode. It simply makes less things run in the background, which translates directly into better FPS and latency. Then go to graphics, change default graphics settings, and enable optimizations for windowed games. In DX10 and DX11 games such as Fortnite, this setting allows you to use windowed full screen, but still get similar if not the same exact input delay as exclusive full screen. If you use full screen though, this won't do anything. If you see hardware accelerated GPU scheduling in here, turn it on as well. It essentially lets your GPU handle more of the workload instead of your CPU, which again is great for CPU heavy games like Fortnite where the GPU usually has headroom. That said, it might cause random stutters or system instability, so it's worth trying but definitely switch it back off if you start running into any of those problems. Next, we're going to disable core isolation. This feature uses virtualization based security, basically running a mini virtual machine in the background, which reduces gaming performance by around 5% on average. There is no performance benefit to leaving it on, and as long as you've got Windows Defender or any other traditional antivirus, you'll be fine. To disable it, hit the Windows key, type core, and press enter. Then just turn off memory integrity. Next, we're gonna debloat Windows for better performance. To do this, we'll be using the newest version of Chris Titus Tech's utility. I've used it on every single Windows PC I've ever owned, and the best part is you don't even have to install anything. To run the utility, press your Windows key, type PowerShell, and run either Windows PowerShell or PowerShell 7 as administrator. Then just type or copy and paste the first line from the description and hit enter. After a few seconds, you should see a window like this pop up. Once it opens, click on the tweaks tab. For desktop users, you can safely copy everything on the left side of the screen, and for laptop users, copy everything on the right. While you're copying those options, I still recommend hovering over each one to read their description so you know exactly what each one changes. Under advanced tweaks caution, you can check off pretty much everything, apart from removing Microsoft Store apps, because you won't be able to take screenshots with snipping tool. And if you happen to visit Adobe websites, don't turn on Adobe Network Block as it makes any and all Adobe websites completely unusable. As for the set display to performance options, skip that for now. We'll be adjusting those display settings manually later in the video. Once you're happy with your options, click on Run Tweaks. After a few minutes, a confirmation window will show up saying the tweaks are finished and you can safely close everything. Now we're going to change up the power plan since it can have a real impact on both latency and frame rate. Press your Windows key, type power, and hit enter to open up the power plan settings. If you're using a mid to high end PC, we're going to add the ultimate performance plan because in my experience, it outperformed every other option across the board. By default, the ultimate plan won't show up, so to add it, open command prompt by pressing your Windows key, typing CMD, and running it as administrator. When you see the command prompt window, type or paste the command from the description and press enter. Once you reopen the power settings, you'll find the ultimate performance plan under the additional plan section. To enable the power plan, simply select it. I still recommend trying out a few different plans and running some quick benchmarks, but on most setups, is usually either the ultimate or balanced power plan that ends up working the best. Moving on to the registry editor tweaks, and do not sleep on these because these tweaks alone gave me 23.7% better 1% lows, which you are going to notice when you're actually playing the game. So press your Windows key, type reg, and open it as admin. To get to the correct folder, just select the text up top and replace it with this line from the description. After pressing enter, you should be in the games folder. So double click GPU priority and set that to decimal 8. Set priority to 6, and both scheduling category and SFIO priority should be high. Scheduling category on high improves responsiveness, and SFIO priority on high speeds up how fast your game gets access to files it needs, such as textures and audio. Next thing we're going to do in the registry is change the value for Win32 priority separation. This controls how Windows balances CPU resources between foreground apps like Fortnite and background processes. By default, Windows tries to strike a balance between the two, but for gaming, we want the processor to focus as much as possible on the game, and that's where this setting comes in. To get to Win32 priority separation, copy and paste this line from the description and 
and press enter. Most people, including me, recommend setting it to decimal 38. That value tells Windows to heavily prioritize the game and reduce how much attention background stuff gets. But unlike the previous values we adjusted, this isn't a one-size-fits-all type of thing. So if 38 doesn't give you the results you wanted, decimal 42, 36, 37, and 40 are also worth trying. Just make sure to restart your PC after each reg tweak to see what actually feels best for your setup. The next tweak is disabling network throttling. Turning this off can help reduce network latency, which is especially useful in Fortnite. So go back up here and paste this path from the description. At first, you might not see network throttling index in this folder, but that's not a problem. Just right click on the right side, click new, then dword 32-bit value and name it network throttling index. Then double click it and set the value to hexadecimal FFFFFFFF to completely disable network throttling on your system. And for the last reg tweak is going to be in the folder we were just in, called system responsiveness. The default value is 20 decimal, which means Windows reserves 20% of CPU resources for background tasks. If you have a 24 core i9-14900K, this probably won't do anything, but if you're like me and have a 6 core CPU, the difference is night and day. So just double click on system responsiveness, set the value to 0, and that'll let your game take full advantage of the CPU when it needs it without sacrificing stability or breaking anything in the background. Now for GPU tweaks. While Fortnite is mostly CPU intensive, optimizing your graphics card still matters, especially if you're using a lower end GPU. Let's start with the Nvidia settings. AMD users, skip to the next chapter of this video. If you have an Nvidia graphics card, right click your desktop and open the Nvidia control panel. Some people swear that these settings don't affect performance, but it makes a huge difference and changing them takes just two minutes. Anyways, go to Manage 3D Settings at the top left. We're gonna leave the first 17 settings default as they are all perfectly optimized. On the OpenGL rendering GPU, switch that from Auto Select to whatever GPU you're currently using. It won't affect Fortnite because it doesn't use OpenGL, but for any other games or software on your PC that does, this can help eliminate performance issues and stuttering. Next, on Power Management Mode, we're gonna set that to Prefer Maximum Performance. This keeps your GPU running at full speed instead of downclocking when under light load to give you the best performance possible at all times. And of course, it's completely safe. Nvidia allows you to change the setting because your GPU is designed to handle it. Then set your preferred refresh rate to highest available for obvious reasons. For shader cache size, increasing this value to 10 gigabytes has consistently reduced stuttering for me and many others, especially in shader heavy games. Anything beyond 10 gigabytes usually makes no difference unless you're playing literally hundreds of shader heavy AAA games. Texture filtering, anisotropic sample optimization in extremely basic terms helps your GPU handle textures more easily. And and in most games like Fortnite, the only difference you'll notice from enabling this is the better FPS. Next, set texture filtering quality to high performance. This makes your GPU focus more on speed and efficiency than making textures look perfect. So the game might look just a little less detailed than it already is, but you'll get smoother gameplay. And finally, disable vertical sync. Next time you reopen the game, play a few games to rebuild the shader cache. And I can almost guarantee that you will have gained a significant FPS boost just from changing these few settings. For AMD graphics cards, these settings improved my 1% lows and reduced both my RAM and VRAM usage by about 1GB each, so don't skip this part. So open your AMD software, click on the settings cog at the top right, and select preferences. Disable everything here and disable hotkeys while you're at it unless you for some reason use AMD software hotkeys. Next go to gaming at the top, find graphics, then scroll down to texture filtering quality and switch it from standard to performance. It's most useful on lower end systems as it reduces the GPU load slightly by lowering texture filtering precision. So Fortnite might look a little less crisp, but it can run smoother. Keep surface format optimization enabled. In Fortnite, it typically helps reduce VRAM usage and increases consistency. You should test this one individually from the others though, as there is a chance that you get worse performance with it on. And finally, we're going to disable tessellation. Set tessellation mode to override application settings, and set maximum tessellation level to off. Fortnite doesn't use heavy tessellation, so disabling it frees up GPU power without affecting visuals. That's it for GPU optimizations. Now it's time to go through every Windows setting to get that last bit of performance out of your PC, as well as improving your desktop's overall responsiveness and privacy. To open your Windows settings, press the Windows key and I at the same time. I'm personally on Windows 11, but if you're on Windows 10, it's going to look a little different for you, though most of the steps will be exactly the same. On the left side, click System, then select Notifications. While notifications themselves don't affect performance, the processes managing them can, so I recommend disabling notifications. 
Under personalization, click dynamic lighting. This background app manages your RGB lighting and can conflict with other RGB software. So do turn off these two settings whether or not you have RGB in your system. Go to apps, then advanced app settings and disable share across devices. This feature was linked to high CPU usage bugs in the past, so turning it off reduces background processes and prevents activity sharing across devices, improving security. After that, return to apps and select startup apps. Disable anything you don't need running at startup. Now click on accessibility on the left, then visual effects. Disable both transparency and animation effects. Even if you don't see these effects in game, your PC will allocate resources for visual effects if you have it enabled. So it's worth turning them off, particularly on low end systems. Moving on to privacy and security, click through each subcategory from general to activity history and disable all unnecessary options for better privacy and security. You can always re-enable anything you want later, but personally, I have everything disabled here. For search permissions, I recommend disabling everything except safe search, which helps filter out inappropriate appropriate content online. In the searching window section, set Find My Files to Classic only if you have a super low-end PC to reduce background CPU and disk usage. For everyone else, it's not worth getting a 0.001 FPS boost by sacrificing your file searching speeds. To finish up these window settings, click on Windows Update, go to Advanced Options, and disable the top four settings. Not only for performance, but to also avoid annoying update notifications and automatic updates during active hours. Then go to Delivery Optimization and uncheck Allow Downloads from other devices. When this is enabled, your PC can upload Windows updates and apps to other devices on the internet, which not only uses bandwidth, but it can also pose a small privacy or security risk. Disabling it ensures your system isn't sharing data behind your back. From there, let's adjust some advanced systems settings. Just like the visual effects we turned off earlier, these will consume resources in the background regardless of the fact that you can't even see these effects when you're in a game. To optimize these system settings, press your Windows key, type advanced, and hit enter. Under performance, click settings. Click adjust for best performance and re-enable these three specific settings near the bottom. This way you free up resources without making Windows look like absolute trash. To finish up the video, we're going to do a quick BIOS tweak, enabling XMP, Expo, or DOCP for your RAM to run at full speeds. To check if you actually need to do this tweak, open up the task manager and see if your RAM is running slower than it's supposed to. If it's running at the speed you expected it to, you don't need to do this part. Otherwise, make sure that your RAM supports XMP slash Expo slash DOCP by checking its information online or in the manual. To enter the BIOS, restart your PC and repeatedly press Delete, F2, or Escape depending on your motherboard. Proceed by finding the XMP slash Expo slash DOCP setting. It's usually on the main page or under Tweaker. And enable it or select Profile 1. It's not really a RAM overclock, but it lets your RAM run at its advertised speed. And you're done. If you found this video useful, feel free to use code LEK when you buy the new Battle Pass, and don't forget to get an exit lag free trial with the link in the description. Bye bye.